welcome back to third lecture of unit number four ventilation and infiltration uh, on ventilation for cooling ventilation has been defined as a supply of fresh air to the conditioned space either by natural or a mechanical means for the purpose of maintaining acceptable indoor air quality uh, however when the outdoor conditions are suitable then the ventilation can also be used for cooling for the building or for cooling of the occupants or both. When the ambient tribal temperature is lower than the building temperature, uh, then the outdoor air can be used for cooling the building. Normally due to solar and internal heat gains, building can become hotter than the ambient air. This provides an opportunity for cooling the building, at least partly by using the uh, freely available outdoor air. This can significantly reduce the load on air conditioning plant uh, because if the outer wall becomes cool, then the less heat uh, transmitted to the inner wall. So obviously the load on the cooling uh, air conditioning plant reduces. Though the cooling of building during daytime may not be possible on all days in an year, there are many days during which outdoor air can act as a heat sink for the building. Uh, greater opportunities exist for cooling the building, especially during the night when the outdoor air is considerably cooler. This is especially effective for hot and dry climates when the di diurnal uh, temperature variation, that is uh, day-night temperature variation is quite large. Ventilation uh, for cooling is also used for occupants as well. Under certain circumstances, outdoor air can also be used very effectively for cooling the occupants of a building directly. By allowing the outdoor air to flow over a body at higher velocity, it is possible to enhance the heat and mass transfer rates from the body, thus leading to a greater feeling of comfort. As a thumb rule uh, studies shows that each increase in air velocity by 0.15 meter per second will allow the conditioned space temperature to be increased by one degree Celsius. Uh, so we can reduce the load on air conditioning system by increasing the air velocity. So obviously uh, there is a thumb rule. Uh, even uh, we can see that uh, if the most of the people, uh, they do not turn on the fan when the air conditioning is on, but it is recommended that both should work. So at the same time, the fan and air conditioner. So this allows us to maintain slightly higher temp, uh, temp, room temperature in the uh, means suppose without fan, if we are meant, if uh, the set temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. So with fan, same comfort level we can achieve with the set temperature 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. And if the set temperature increases, obviously load on air conditioning system reduces. So that way we can also uh, reduce the energy. So this is a thumb rule. If we increase the velocity by 0.15, uh, uh, by 0.15 meter per second, it will allow us to increase the temperature of air conditioner by one degree Celsius. As mentioned before, maintaining the conditional space at higher temperature can give rise to a significant reduction in the energy consumption of the air conditioning system. However, in greater the air velocity, if it exceeds above one meter per second, may give rise to a feeling of draft or irritation to the occupant. So generally that uh, it is recommended to have 0.36 to 0.5 meter per second uh, velocity in the room. Uh, if it exceeds one meter per second, then uh, <coughs> there is a possibility of feeling of draft or irritation to the occupant. So there is a limit on air, air velocity as well. The cooling effect provided by ventilated outdoor air is mainly a sensible in nature. Uh, even though uh, it may also extract latent heat from the occupants if it is cool and dry, the sensible cooling rate provided by outdoor air is given by this formula. That is uh, Q that is equal to MCP delta T. Delta T is exhaust temperature minus outdoor temperature. So mainly it absorbs the sensible heat, even though there is a fraction sensible latent heat it carries, but it is negligible. Where M dot V is the mass flow rate of ventilated air, uh, TO and TX are the temperatures of the outdoor air and uh, temperature of the exhaust air after cooling. 
respectively and this is QO is the rate of heat transfer, sensible heat transfer. Uh, so there are two types of uh, ventilation, natural ventilation and mechanical ventilation. Uh, the principle of natural ventilation is very well known and is widely studied. Most of the older buildings, if you see before the advent of electricity, mainly relied on natural ventilation, especially some old buildings, uh, there is a provision for natural ventilation. Now modern building, they are uh, not provided with this facility. But uh, before the invention of air conditioner, uh, generally the natural ventilation is widely used for maintaining the comfort table conditions. However, as mentioned before, relying only on natural ventilation imposes several restrictions on building design. So this is not possible nowadays because of the restriction of the space. We cannot achieve natural ventilation uh, because it puts uh, several restrictions on the building design. Natural ventilation, uh, the opposite windows are uh, generally recommended. For example, windows on opposite walls have to be provided to all the rooms to meet the natural ventilation requirement. As a result, large buildings have to be designed in simple t shape L shape and H shape. So like that, this is L shape uh, building profile where we can uh, maintain a cross ventilation. And then uh, T uh, this is T shape uh, with the help of T shape also the cross ventilation can be provided and with the help of H shape. So this structure is recommended for natural ventilation where there is a possibility of cross ventilation everywhere. Uh, so uh, uh, if the space is available, we can provide such kind of structures, but not possible every case. The ceiling height uh, has to be high to improve natural ventilation. So that is another restriction that ceiling height should be uh, higher. Generally 14 to 15 feet is recommended. In addition to this, the amount of air flow due to natural ventilation is also uncertain as it depends on, because uh, it uh, depends on the outs outdoor uh, conditions. Uh, so natural ventilation is not controllable. It is highly dependent on outside air conditions. So mainly it depends on the magnitude and direction of prevailing winds, then ambient air temperature, landscaping and adjacent structures. So if the structure is adjacent structure, is it uh, mainly that if the structure is in front of your window, it blocks the airflow. So that also puts the restrictions. Design of building, and position of windows and doors, uh, then location of furniture also matters, then movement of occupants, etc. And due to uh, its uncertain nature, natural ventilation is treated as a secondary objective in the design of modern buildings. Natural ventilation uh, mainly depends on wind effect and stack effect. Uh, so these are the two. first we'll discuss the wind uh, effect that is wind induced natural ventilation. When the wind blows over a building, a static pressure difference is created over the surface and uh, <coughs> the surface of the building. The pressure difference depends on the wind speed, wind direction and surface orientation and the surrounding structure as shown in figure. Uh, so we'll see the figure that in next uh, slide. Uh, it is undistributed air stream. The pressure is positive on the wind direction and negative on the leeward direction. The static pressure on the other uh, on the other surface depends on the angle of attack. The pressure is uh, called as wind pressure. In general, the magnitude of the wind pressure PW is proportional to the velocity of velocity head or velocity pressure. And in ideal case, it is given by this expression that is the wind pressure is given by Cp times rho v square by two, where uh, Cp is the surface pressure coefficient rho is the air density vw is the wind speed the value of cp uh, depends on several factors such as wind direction orientation and of the buildings etc analytical evaluation of cp is quite complicated uh, even though uh, these values have been measured experimentally for simple structures uh, so the pressure uh, this is a uh, wind induced natural ventilation so windward side where the positive pressure is created leeward side where the negative pressure is created and because of this positive pressure the pressure difference across the building uh, is because uh, due to wind 
creates a potential for air flow through the buildings through the openings if the openings are provided through the opening the pressurized fluid is flowing if the openings are available on the building the air flow rates through the building due to wind effect can uh, obtain approximately uh, approximately by using the equation suggested by ashray so ashray has suggested this equation so this equation is used to calculate uh, the ventilated rate due to uh, wind effect uh, so q dot w that is rate of flow due to wind effect c is the constant r is again constant that will a is the area vw is the wind velocity so qw is the air flow rate that is in meter cube a is the area we have seen that is area of the opening that is meter square c is the constant that takes the value of 0.55 for perpendicular winds if the uh, the windows are placed perpendicular to the wind then uh, 0.55 value is taken and uh, 0.3 value is taken for oblique winds r is the factor that is a function of inlet and outlet areas uh, that is ai and ao of the opening the factor r varies from 1 to about 1.38 depending upon the ratio of inlet and outlet areas so mostly these values are uh, given in the tables uh, and depending upon the area, if the area uh, estimation of wind speed is difficult, uh, however, data provided by the meteorological departments can be used for calculation purposes. Since the wind speed varies with season, uh, for design calculations, generally 50% of summer wind speed as provided by meteorological, uh, meteorological data can be used. So generally in the data book, region wise, uh, the wind velocity is prescribed. Uh, so for calculation, generally this value is considered as a 50% of the summer wind speed uh, as provided by the meteorological data. Since the air flow rate due to wind effect is a strong function of opening or window area, suitable values should be used for design calculations. The areas to be used in the calculations are the net free area of the opening, not the total opening uh, area. Uh, the distribution of opening areas between inlet and outlet is also important. Uh, it is shown that the flow rate is maximum when the inlet area is equal to the outlet area. When inlet and outlet areas are not equal, then the effective area has to be used. Uh, uh, in the below equation and can be calculated by using this formula where a effective area can be calculated by using inlet area and outlet area by using this expression so this way uh, uh, effective area is calculated uh, when the outlet area is greater than uh, the inlet area uh, then the greater speeds are obtained uh, because the inlet area is smaller than uh, the speed of uh, the or the velocity of the air within the room or within the ventilated space is more. Uh, so uh, greater speeds are obtained at the inlet compared to the outlet and vice versa. Thus manipulating the areas, for example, by opening or closing some windows, it is possible to achieve higher velocities in certain areas compared to the others. Uh, the shape of the window also plays a very important role. If the wind is not perpendicular, uh, generally for oblique winds, short and wide windows provide a better airflow compared to square or narrow and tall windows. Uh, in general, any wind treatment such as a curtain, blinds, etc., reduce the airflow rate due to wind defects. Uh, uh, architectural uh, features such as overhang. Uh, overhangs balconies can be used beneficially to improve the airflow due to wind effect. Uh, so this is about the wind effect. So only one expression is there. So with the help of and how to calculate the effective area that we have studied. Then uh, ventilation due to stack effect. Uh, when there is a temperature difference between indoor and outdoor, airflow takes place due to buoyancy or stack effect. Stack, stack effect is nothing but a buoyancy effect. And that generally uh, the air flows because of the density difference and density difference is created because of the difference in indoor and outdoor temperature. So during winter, the indoor air is generally warmer compared to the outdoor air. As a result, 
if there are openings in the building, then warm air inside the building rises due to buoyancy and lifts from the opening provided at the top. While the cold air uh, like this, so the, uh, this is actually a vertical line that is uh, the outside pressure and the inclined line is uh, inside pressure. So generally, uh, if the inside air, yeah, this is in winter condition, if the inside temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, outside temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. In that case, the warm air comes from the, so windows is necessary at the bottom. So warm, warm air comes because the negative pressure is there. So this is suppose zero pressure. So pressure is less than zero means the negative pressure is in the room, at, especially at the bottom, because warm air goes up. So the cold air comes from the bottom, uh, which is uh, bottom uh, side windows. Uh, and it flows up and from the upside windows, it goes up. So this is happen generally in winter. Uh, so the windows are provided at the top and bottom. So during winter season, uh, when the atmospheric pressure temperature is less than the required room temperature, or indoor temperature in that case the air flow takes place from bottom to top so the air and cold air enters into the room from the windows provided at the bottom and the warm air goes out of the room from the windows provided at the top uh, while cold outdoor air enters into the building through the opening near the base of the building. The reverse happens during the summer case. So this is reverse happening. When inside is cooler compared to the outside. So now inside temperature is still 20 degrees Celsius. Outside temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. So it is cooler compared to outside. The warm outside air enters the building from the top opening. In that case, uh, the air enters from the top because at the top level the air is comparatively cold so the pressure is less on the top opening and cold indoor air lifts the building from the bottom openings so bottom opening is there so this way the air flow takes place during summer season so the same windows are there but <clears throat> exactly the reverse flow happens in summer because outside temperature is greater than inside temperature so generally due to stack effect in a building at a particular height the internal and external pressures are equal. So at this particular pressure, mm -hmm. uh, that this vertical point, uh, the, that is called as a neutral pressure level. So at this height, inlet uh, and outlet pressure remains constant and uh, there is no flow takes place, stop opening. So generally, <coughs> the internal and external, uh, this height is known as a, neutral pressure level so the height from the ground level that is called the neutral pressure level obviously if openings are provided at npl uh, that is neutral pressure level then no flow uh, no air flow take so care should be taken uh, if we have to utilize the stack effect then opening should not be provided at the neutral pressure level state or at the height where the neutral pressure exists uh, so knowledge of uh, neutral pressure level thus is useful in enhancing the airflow. So generally greater the height uh, from the neutral pressure level, greater is the stack effect that is uh, there. So however, estimation of uh, neutral pressure level is extremely difficult as it depends on several factors such as distribution of the openings, the resistance of the opening to airflow, the resistance to vertical airflow within the building, etc. In an ideal case, when openings are uniformly distributed and there is no internal resistance uh, to vertical airflow, uh, the NPL is at the mid height of the building. So whatever the NPL it is shown, so the, it is shown at the mid. So in this case, we have this is the, in ideal case it happens because it doesn't consider the resistance at the openings that is bottom opening and lower opening resistance to the flow when the uh, when uh, air flows in vertical direction vertical up or vertical down directions so these uh, factors are neglected here <coughs> uh, and the distribution of the air so uh, large number of theoretical and experimental studies have been carried out uh, 
to estimate NPL for a wide variety of buildings. And in general, these studies show that for tall buildings, uh, the NPL lies between 0.3 to 0.7 times the total building height. So generally in between, uh, so just below the center level or just above the center level, it should lie. Asherai suggests the following equation for estimating air flow rate due to stack effect. Uh, so due to stack effect, we can calculate uh, the flow rate by using this expression, where in the above expression, H is uh, the height difference between inlet and uh, exit. So higher the height, higher is the flow rate due to stack effect. Then delta T is the temperature difference between inside and outside. Tw is the warmer air temperature in Kelvin. So in summer, it is taken as outside temperature. In winter, this is take, Tw is taken as a inside temperature. Delta T is the temperature difference between warm and cold air. Uh, a is the free area of the inlet or outlet in meter square. So lowest of the area generally considered, that is A is the area in meter square. And C is the constant that takes a value of, uh, so the value of C is taken as 0.0. 707 when inlet and outlets are of uh, optimal that is about 65 percent uh, effective uh, and 0 0.04 when inlet and inlet or outlets are obstructed uh, so the effective area uh, covered from between inlet and outlet it, so 35 percent blockage if it is there up to 35 percent blockage the value is considered as 0 0.707 but the blockage if it is about 50%, then uh, the C value is also comparatively less. So these two values we have to choose. Uh, generally in the numerical, the values are given. From the above equation, it can be seen that compared to height H and temperature difference delta T, the air flow rate due to stack effect depends most strongly on the area of the opening. So because uh, this bracket is raised to 0.5, so it's uh, comparatively, the effect of H and delta T is less as compared to the opening area. So greater the opening, uh, greater is the flow rate due to stack effect. So this is most uh, influencing factor for stack effect. Uh, so uh, generally, uh, both effects are used in combination in natural ventilation, that is wind and stack effect. Uh, so complications uh, arises when it is required to estimate the air flow rate due to combined effects of wind and stack. Uh, generally, the total air flow rate uh, has to be obtained using a combined pressure difference due to wind and stack effects and not by adding air flows rates due to stack effect and wind effect separately. Uh, addition is not there. Uh, uh, this is due to the non-linear dependence of the flow rate on pressure difference across the openings. In general, uh, taller the building with smaller internal resistance, stronger will be the stack effect. And higher the area of exposure of the building, stronger will be the wind effect. So several models uh, have been proposed to estimate the air flow rate due to combined effects of wind and stack. So for example, one such model uses the equation given below. So this is the equation for estimating the total air flow rate due to stack and uh, wind effect. Uh, so if the wind effect is comparable to stack effect, so this is a pressure variation in the positive side, that is windward side. So where the pressure uh, is maximum at the bottom, it decreases uh, continuously as the height uh, of the building increases. Uh, this is the pressure uniform, uh, sorry, uh, continuously reducing pressure is because of the height effect. So at the height increases because of the Pascal's law, uh, sorry, hydrostatic law as height increases, uh, uh, at the depth of the point increases, the pressure increases towards bottom or vice versa. But the pressure on the leeward side is uh, uh, always less than the pressure on the windward side by this much amount, this constant difference is there. Uh, so, but that uh, leeward side pressure also increases, uh, sorry, decreases with increasing height. Uh, so this is leeward uh, side pressure, and this is inward, that is outside pressure, we can say. 
and the inside pressure uh, uh, this is the inside pressure that may arises on the stack again inside pressure also it varies with the height uh, so as the height increases this pressure uh, decreases because on x axis there is a pressure so there is a decreasing value of pressure but not considerable uh, wind effect there is a considerable drop in pressure as uh, with respect to height and the intersection of this gives a neutral points where uh, we have to avoid uh, generally the windows so obviously uh, if you see here uh, the pressure even it is greater than the levered pressure so outside uh, this air will not come inside so obviously the flow uh, takes place from uh, left to right because the wind pressure is greater than the inside pressure so the pressure flows Yes, so the opening is recommended here. So if the opening is provided here at this particular location in the combine, so air it uh, comes inside the room. Uh, similarly, uh, as the height increases, pressure decreases. So this is the point where the neutral pressure arises. Uh, so above this point, uh, generally the inside pressure is greater than the wind pressure. So in that case, if the opening is provided at the, uh, above this point, the air will go out of the so the good airflow takes place due to stack effect as well as wind effect so again the opening is provided at the bottom and top and depending upon uh, the inside pressure wind pressure and levered pressure uh, the intersection points arises and we have to make sure that uh, that window should be provided bottom window should be provided below this intersection point because pressure is uh, equal here because or uh, this is neutral pressure and so obviously the pressure at this location and that is uh, wind pressure is greater than the inside pressure so air comes inside and also the uh, levered pressure is less than uh, the inside pressure so obviously there is no resistance from this side so air will come inside here we can see uh, uh, the inside pressure exceeds the wind pressure the positive side so the air goes up out of the room so the proper ventilation takes place so this is when the wind effect is comparable with the stack effect but when the wind effects are stronger than stack effect uh, and then there is no intersection taking place there is no intersection taking place so obviously uh, the air comes inside every time and it goes up but above this somewhere above this the the windows are provided on the opposite side so where <coughs> the wind effect is stronger than the stack effect so this is the pressure variation uh, outside and inside the uh, conditioned space and the total uh, flow rate is estimated by using this expression now the certain guidelines uh, required for natural ventilation because uh, we have to uh, adjust our system or building structure accordingly as far as possible, the following guidelines should be followed for getting the maximum benefit from natural ventilation for cooling of the building and occupants. In hot and uh, humid climate, uh, maximize air velocity in the occupied zone for body cooling. While in hot and dry climate, maximize air flow through the building for structural cooling, especially during the nights. Uh, so the body, uh, the Generally, uh, outside air is utilized for body cooling when the condition is hot and humid. But uh, in hot and dry climate, especially during night, the air flow rate is used for building cooling. The building should be shared, uh, such that the maximum surface area is exposed to the external wind, like L-shape, H-shape, and T-shape buildings if you provide. So one maximum <coughs> openings are exposed to the external winds. Locate the windows uh, suitably. Windows on opposite walls increase the air flow rate, while the windows on adjacent walls provide air flow over greater areas. Uh, in buildings uh, with only one external wall, uh, higher air flow rates are obtained compared to widely spaced windows. There's only one external wall, so then widely spaced windows to be provided for getting uh, higher flow rate. 
the windows should be placed uh, as far as possible away from the NPL to maximize the stack effect that we're already seeing H factor is important that is distance between inlet and outlet. So, but if it is placed uh, as uh, far as far as from NPL that is neutral uh, pressure level then it gives maximum uh, it gives a good effect of stack wide and short windows are generally better than square or vertical windows as they provide higher air flow over a wide range of wind directions um, windows should be accessible to and operable by occupants for greater control of natural ventilation so uh, maybe uh, occupants should easily operate the wind opening and closing of the windows to divert or to the flow rate for a certain areas so these are some guidelines for natural uh, ventilations uh, but uh, provided uh, your outdoor conditions must be conducive for natural ventilation that is so natural ventilation in building, if you see, uh, uh, this is a flow rate that we already studied. This is slightly a pictorial view. So in this case, the if the, there is only stack effect, uh, then somewhere here is a neutral point. So windows are provided at the bottom and top. So this is when cold conditions are there, uh, when the air comes from the outside from the bottom side and goes out to the atmosphere from the top side. Exactly reverse thing happened in uh, summer condition or hot conditions. So this way the flow rate uh, or air circulation takes place in, in stack effect. Wind effect obviously this is a positive pressure side and this is negative pressure side. Uh, the pressure obviously higher here and the air flows anywhere we can place the windows but it should be normal to the wind direction and opposite side we can provide the windows so for the cross ventilation so this is wind effect and if we combine both stack and wind effect uh, so there is a pressure variation like this so in the in that case uh, uh, opposite side windows are placed but there should be a height provided between inlet and outlet not at the same line if we have to take the benefit of both stack and wind effect. Uh, there should be some difference, level difference between inlet uh, area and outlet area. So this is the way this inside pressure. So pressure continuously increases. So here flow in, outside pressure is greater. Flow out, in that case, the inside pressure is greater. Inside pressure is greater. So this is uh, pressure variation and uh, in all three effects uh, in combination stack effect only stack effect only wind effect and the combination of both force ventilation uh, generally in this case uh, as mentioned before uh, compared to natural ventilation the use of fans for providing a ventilation uh, force ventilation it is also called as a mechanical ventilation uh, so where the electric fans are used and uh, electric fan provides a uh, greater flexibility and control over the ventilation the ventilation using electric fan is less sensitive to outdoor conditions and hence is more certain uh, so it doesn't depend on the outside conditions or, or outside wind velocity and temperature so uh, that's why it is more certain we can any time we can uh, achieve the comfort condition in general, depending upon the specific design, the fan-assisted ventilation can aid or oppose the natural ventilation. Obviously, uh, uh, if the aim is to use outdoor air for cooling, then the design should be such that the mechanical and natural ventilations complement each other rather than oppose each other. So if we're using fan and natural ventilation uh, without understanding the flow, behavior it may oppose uh, so mechanical ventilation may oppose the natural ventilation uh, because uh, mechanical ventilation uh, due to uh, fan uh, it doesn't allow outside air to come inside because of the fan velocity 
uh, but if uh, uh, the aim is to use both outdoor air as well as indoor air during the design uh, then uh, we can design in such a way that mechanical and natural ventilation complement each other other than others in general fan power consumption is quite small and can be estimated by using this formula uh, where uh, w is the power into consumption of the fan so q fan is the air flow provided by the fan in meter cube per second delta p is the pressure rise due to fan in pascals and the efficiency of the fan the efficiency of the fan may vary from 0.35 for small shared pole single phase motor uh, generally 16 hp to about 0.85 for large three phase motors 5 hp capacity uh generally questions can in summary we will uh, compare natural and vent, uh, mechanical ventilation uh, natural ventilation means if the ventilation is provided by natural means such as wind or stack effect uh, that is due to wind effect is due to the stack effect is mainly due to the temperature gradient or density gradient then it is called as natural ventilation means if ventilation is provided by natural means then it is called as natural ventilation if the ventilation is provided using mechanical means such as fans or blower then it is called as a mechanical ventilation uh, natural ventilation it is uh, generally dependent on outdoor conditions since not controllable but uh, mechanical ventilation it is highly controllable and is available as and when required so it doesn't depend on the outside conditions in case of natural ventilation uh, it may impose several restrictions on building so we have seen that uh, generally only uh, this three shapes buildings l shape building t t shape building and h shape building only this kind of shape buildings provide uh, cross ventilation or the better utilization of natural ventilation happens uh, but that's why uh, it uh, imposes several restrictions if so if we use uh, some other modern design techniques so uh sometimes natural uh, ventilation is not possible but for mechanical ventilation it gives a flexibility for building design so any kind of aesthetic we can design uh, if we have to go for mechanical ventilation uh generally uh, natural ventilation is not suitable when comfort conditions are stringent uh, so if we have to uh, maintain us uh, some comfort conditions continuously for 24 by 7 uh, uh, all the 12 months uh, then uh, in that circumstances only relying on natural ventilation is not possible so uh, it is not recommended to go for natural ventilation if you have to provide a stringent uh, comfort conditions but uh, extensively used for applications where the conditions are stringent so option for that is the mechanical ventilation so with the mechanical ventilations uh, 24 by 7 and all the 12 months we can achieve the comfort conditions natural ventilation offers less flexibility and control on ventilation obviously it depends on outdoor temperature and velocity so uh, it offers less flexibility uh, and control on ventilations only geometric point of view we can provide a large windows and cross ventilation but at the same time the atmospheric condition should uh, should be conducive for that but uh, in mechanical ventilation it offers a greater flexibility and control on ventilations in mechanical ventilation there is a possibility of we can easily control uh, the ventilation rate as well So these are some points which differentiate natural ventilation from mechanical ventilation. Now we'll uh, take one numerical. Uh, generally, this numerical is asked for four to six mark. Uh, so in this numerical, a building which consists of a window, a window size is given. So 1.5 meter to 1.5 meter. That is a square windows on the wall facing the wind. So in this case, uh, the inlet. area opening is provided that is a square opening and the opening 1.5 meter um, by 1 meter on the opposite windows so that is outlet exit window so exit window is smaller than inlet window so obviously effective area is required for stack effect 
uh, wind effect. Center to center distance between windows in vertical direction is 2.5 meter. So H value is given distance between. So both are not at the same height. Uh, they are the difference between two cent, uh, windows is around 2.5 meter. The outdoor temperature is 313 Kelvin, while the indoor temperature is uh, 303 K. So obviously TW value is a warmer temperature we have to take. So that is 31 K. So this is summer air conditioning where the outdoor temperature is greater than indoor temperatures. So in that case, the flow takes place from top to bottom during stack effect. Calculate the air flow rate due to combined effect of wind and stack effects. If wind blows at a speed of 25 meter per uh, sorry, 25 kilometer per hour so what should be the flow rate due to stack effect and so first of all we'll calculate the air flow rate due to wind effect so this is the expression suggested by ashray where the air flow rate is given by c r a and v w there are four variables out of that c and r are constants so the value of c is taken as 0.55 uh, uh, for perpendicular winds because winds are perpendicular that's why 0.55 it's not perpendicular slight lesser value is taken r value is given that is 1.18 based on the area ratio of okay. these so in the, from the table uh, these values are given so c and r values are generally given in the numerical statement a value uh, we can consider uh, the same if the we are, uh, the uh, inlet opening and outlet openings are same but here they are different so effective area needs to be calculated so the effective area is given by this formula and it is estimated as 0.2465 wind velocity is given but that is given in kilometer per hour so calculate in meter per second all the values uh, known to us we can calculate the by substituting these values here we can calculate the flow rate due to wind effect so it comes around 1.11 meter cube per second so similarly we calculate the air flow due to stack effect so the formula of stack effect is this c a h delta t by t w so already c value assuming optimal distribution so 65 percent Lockage considering we uh, take the value of C that is 0 0.0707. If the blockage is 50% around, then the value is reduced. And the area of smaller opening for calculation of air. So the lowest possible area we consider. Generally, it is considered for the worst design. So the lowest area is considered. And substituting these values, H is given 2.4. Uh, delta T is 10 degrees Celsius because it is the difference between outdoor and TW is the warmer temperature is warm temperature is outside temperature. So putting all these values, 1.5 is the lowest low, lower area and 2.5 is height, 10 degrees Celsius delta T 313. Uh, make sure that delta TW should be uh, placed in Kelvin rather than because our SI unit of temperature is Kelvin, not degree Celsius. So wherever the temperature is, only temperature value we have to substitute. It should be in Kelvin. So we are 313 Kelvin. So it comes around 0.03 meter cube per second. So very small as compared to wind effect. Stack effect is because the temperature difference is not that much large. Also, the area opening is also not. Hence, the total air flow rate due to combined uh, effect is calculated. So it is close to the wind effect. So a negligible stack if, uh, effect is there. So only the contribution of 0.03 meter cube per second. So this is the total flow rate. So we can make sure whether this uh, flow rate is sufficient to maintain the delta T between inside and outside. Uh, depending upon that, uh, it can be decided that whether to go for uh, additional ventilation or mechanical ventilation or not. But uh, it can be seen that compared to wind effect, air flow due to stack effect is negligible. So this way the problem uh, can be asked. And from this also we can uh, calculate uh, the mass flow density. If you multiply this by density, we get the mass flow rate. And uh, tilt that you know first. So what 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 is the amount of heat transfer? Also we can calculate using mass flow rate. So that way also we can 
in terms of the heat source is present there. Then whether this particular airflow is sufficient for maintaining the comfort condition or not, that also we can later on determine. So this is the problem where we can calculate the flow rate due to stack effect as well as uh, wind effect. That's it for this uh, topic, ventilation, uh, ventilation for cooling. So uh, ventilation for cooling uh, is especially used if the outdoor temperature is less than the comfort temperature, then the outside air can be used for cooling as well. So ventilation is required for uh, maintaining uh, adequate comfort conditions, uh, acceptable indoor air quality. Mm. Uh, you should be able to describe uh, how the ventilation is can be used for the cooling. You should be able to differentiate between natural and mechanical ventilation. Especially in natu na natural ventilation uh, is mainly because of wind effect and stack effect uh, that you should be able to describe. What are the expressions used for calculating wind effect, stack effect? At the same time, the Difference in that table we have discussed, uh, there are two, five points we have discussed, which uh, differentiate natural ventilation from mechanical ventilation. So you should be able to differentiate natural and mechanical ventilation. You should be able to explain and determine uh, ventilation flow rate due to wind and stack effect. So um, on the given information also, so even uh, for any house, if the ventilation is provided, uh, whether in the extreme case, you, you should be able to determine in, in your house also, so whether the ventilation air, so you can measure the uh, wind velocity with the help of uh, anemometer. You can measure the size of the windows, opposed windows, and measure the vertical distance. So both uh, flow rate due to stack effect and wind effect you can calculate. And accordingly, the total flow rate you can calculate. And if that flow rate is there, then what should be the uh, amount of heat to be transferred by NCP delta T, NCP heat transfer that you can calculate. A small uh, load, I think uh, this uh, natural ventilation is sufficient. But uh, for large heat sources, uh, natural we cannot rely on natural ventilation. So this is a small bit of unit number four, ventilation for cooling. So main importance is uh, that the natural ventilation part and the difference between natural and mechanical ventilation and uh, the numerical part, these questions can be asked. So with this, we have completed uh, the third lecture. So next lecture, uh, we will discuss the last part that is uh, space air distribution. Thank you very much. <laughs>